which has recently ended. And of course, our customer service culture in Nigeria and of course, some entertainment news as well. But all that will come after we take a look at the front pages of the headlines this morning. So we'll take a short break and when we return, we go straight into the swing of things. Don't stay, stay with us. Welcome back. It's Daybreak Extra on Trust TV. And right now we're going to look at the front pages of the newspapers this morning to see what makes the news. We start with Daily Trust newspaper and carries this major headline on the front page. Federal government earmarks 470 billion naira for ASU as Buhari proposes 20.51 trillion naira budget for 2023. And it comes with riders here. It says projects 9.73 trillion revenue, 8.8 .8 trillion naira new borrowing. And says petrol subsidy is not sustainable. President, vice president to spend 3.34 billion naira on trips, 1.90 billion naira on new vehicles. Oil thieves, Nigeria's worst enemies, saboteurs, says Lowen and Gajabi Amila. These stories are on page 8, 4 and 8. Nangwati cement shut down truck drivers block Rokoja Abuja Highway. And that story is on page 7. On Encounter, we have Meet 18 year old water powered rocket inventor. And that is on page 10. Rains pains inside Nigeria's recurring flood menace. That story is on page 5 and 6. Why Nigeria can't legalize cannabis by Marwa page seven you'll find details of that story going towards the top of the front page there i'm a human rights activist not rape apologist says yomi fabi that is on page 12 and right here a story of a 49 year old neighbor raped three year old daughter and threatened her says mother on page three now these are the major headlines on the front page of daily trust this saturday Okay, let's take a look at some more stories on the Punch uh, newspaper today. Um, the lead story there um, says 20.5 trillion naira uh, budget. Nasima LCCI experts fault Buhari's borrowing plan subsidy. And the riders say budget unhealthy for productive sector targeted at upcoming polls. That's according to Nasima. Executive adjust 2023 MTEF FSP passed by NAS lawmakers kick. Uh, and then uh, you'd see the one about NAS committees approving budgets for government enterprises without my approval. That's according to President Mohammed Buhari. You'd find other interesting stories on the punch this morning, like this one on the top. Deaths, losses, tears as flawed overrun Kugi, Anambra, Gombe, others. 24 killed, over 16,000 houses destroyed in Katsina. Um, and on page 5, I don't steal. NWC agreed on allowance. That's according to Ayu. No, resign or beg, Autumn tells party chair. And on page 9, on the Punch newspaper, this Saturday, strike. Federal government threatens ASU with contempt. Lecturers say they are studying ruling. Uh, you'd find other... <coughs> A bit more interesting stories on page 16. Atiku Tinubu will be divide celebrities. Uh, that's on page 16 on the punch this morning. 
and on um, page eight Ogunshola emerges unilag first female vc uh, you'd find another very interesting story on page 24 and 25 more brandy fathers pounce on helpless daughters for sexual pleasure masqueraders carted away 550,000 after attack on plateau church that's according to uh, the church's pastor and on page seven Kogi Dangote fight dirty over Obajana cement plant. These are some of the major stories on the punch this morning. Next we'll take a look at the nation newspaper on Saturday and it has this major story on the front page roads real versity's priority in 20.5 trillion Naira 2023 budget. And it comes with these riders, presidency to spend 133 billion, national assembly 169 billion, and judiciary gets 150 billion. Fuel subsidy not sustainable to be removed, government insists. Buhari, we expect better understanding from university lecturers, while Lawan seeks total war against oil thieves, and reps want them charged with treason. And of course, a further analysis of the budget has the key numbers there. 16.87 trillion Naira is the total collectible revenue. 8.8 .8 trillion Naira to finance uh, deficit and 6.3 trillion for debt servicing, while the oil price benchmark is pegged at $70 per barrel. Go back to work immediately. Appeal court orders ASU, and that is a story on page 29, and comes with a rider. Strike will soon be resolved, says Gwajak Biamila. Now straight into politics, PDP crisis, I'm not in office to loot, says Ayu, set to publish account books in December. Details of that on page six. Teenager kills mother for calling him bastard. <laughs> and that is a story on page two of the Nation newspaper. And just like we've seen in other papers, Okunshala named Unilag's first female vice chancellor. For details of that, turn to page two. Towards the top of the front page, Delisting Omehia as ex-reverse governor, not political, says Wiki. And he his writers here to say he prohibits, prohibits use of public schools for rallies without permission and APC to assembly. Apologize to reverse people. Still talking politics, Oshum APC asks court to set aside judgment for ending Oyetola's deputy's candidacy. That is on page six. And these are the major headlines on the front page of the nation this Saturday. Very interesting stories. Now let's take a look at some more on uh, the leadership uh, newspaper uh, this weekend. Uh, the lead story there, uh, which is right on page four, emergency response teams overwhelmed by scale of floods. 67 dead, over 6,000 rendered homeless in Yobi. 18 killed in Niger, 50,000 displaced in 20 local governments. Power outage adds to suffering in Kogi. And you could see a very uh, disheartening picture there that shows you people that have been rendered homeless uh, because of the floods. Uh, some are moving their uh, valuables uh, to safer places. You'd find other stories on the leadership this morning. PMB presents proposed 20.5 trillion era budget to National Assembly proposes 10.78 trillion deficit uh, max 6.31 trillion for debt servicing uh, 5.35 trillion as capital expenditure uh, you'd find other stories as well atiku at tinubu at daggers <coughs> excuse me drawn over delay in campaign kickoff call of strike within seven days appeal court orders asu uh, you'd find other very interesting stories on the leadership newspaper this morning. Truck drivers block Abuja, Lokoja Road over Obajana factory closure. PDP crisis, stealing not among my many faults. This is according to Ayu. And then uh, on page four, Unilag appoints Ugushola as first female vice chancellor. All right, next we take a look at The Guardian on Saturday. And, of course, it, um, in keeping with what we have seen so far, it comes with this major story. Buhari plans borrowing 8.80 trillion naira to fund 2023 budget. And riders here, they say capital expenditure to gulp 5.35 trillion. Debt service, 6.3 trillion. Pegs oil benchmark at $70. Exchange rate at 435 naira per dollar. 
and also reveals public debt stock rose from 39.6 trillion naira in December 2021 to 40.22.8 trillion naira in June 2022. Says government alone can't fund education. While Guajaguamila can versus strict penalty for oil thieves. Experts who rewa lament huge deficit tasks MDAs on accountability and prudence. These are the riders supporting the major headline on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Uh, further, there's an infographic uh, showing the budget breakdown. You can actually take a look at that to see what gets spent on what. On page three, news um, appeal court orders ASU to resume work immediately. And of course, Fourth Mainland Bridge, Lagos, to unveil preferred bidder in December. Other stories on The Guardian this <coughs> morning. Obajana Koyi moves to cancel existing CFO, recover dividends from Dangwete. And Professor Fola Shadi Ogunshola is first Unilag female VC. That's on page 18. On Saturday's special, they say grappling with the menace of street trading and criminality in Lagos. And um, Fina finds fame fortune in Biggie's house. I think that's something to do with the Big Brother. And of course, um, Guardian Woman features Soraya Ahmad, who says technology could be a game changer for women in northern Nigeria. Now, these are the major headlines on the front page of the Guardian newspaper this morning. And uh, this is where we wrap up a quick look at the front pages of the newspapers this Saturday. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll analyze some of these stories right here in the studio. Do stay with us. Welcome back. It's still Daybreak Extra on Trust TV. And we'll take a look at um, some of the stories that are making the rounds uh, this morning on most of the headlines of the newspapers that we actually looked at. Um, Zainab, I, I noticed that the biggest story is actually the, the, the budget thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, everybody's talking about it. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, these are all figures, numbers, huge trillions of Naira. Mm -hmm. And um, I think um, what, what most people are actually worried about is, is the amount of money to be borrowed. Because yeah. we've been borrowing for a very long time and we still intend yeah. to keep borrowing again. I mean, like, really? It's really uh, appalling, mm. uh, a lot of people have said. But it seems like uh, this time around, ASU is, is taking a stand. It seems ASU has gotten a yeah, place well, in all of this. Yeah, 470 billion, it's, mm. it's, it's not bad. If the money will be dispersed to them and it will be used judiciously, I think it will go a long way in doing something for the education sector, tertiary education most especially. But still, um, we're still getting... I, I think it's it's like there's a, there's a little bit of a, a, an irony to the whole situation mm -hmm. because we're giving ASU 470 billion right. and then we're saying that government cannot sustain funding universities. Mm -hmm. So where are we heading? Well, you know, uh, 
this is not my opinion, <laughs> but a lot of people uh, have said that well, it looks like there's, there's a bit of politics mm. in it. Mm. This is absolutely not my opinion. Mm. A lot of people have said, though, that it looks political mm. in nature, but we, we, you never know. Well, yeah, you, 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 you never know. But let's move slightly away from the budget mm -hmm. thing. I mean, like, that's, that is taken over. One thing that has actually come up, and um, the devastation of the floods. Absolutely. I mean, like we were talking about this before we started mm -hmm. the show. I mean, like how devastating actually, and there were warnings. We had been warned that there was going to be rainfall, was going to be um, the heaviest, the heaviest we've seen. exactly in a long time. I mean, like we're in October and it's still raining, mm -hmm. you know, and the floods have devastated. We've gotten these res uh, the, the, these warnings and we didn't do anything about it. Yes, well, people, uh, the, the numbers are not encouraging at all, mm. and people are just. I would say fending for themselves at mm. this point because um, the problem we've always seen with Nigeria is we, we like to we like to take blanket approaches to certain problems. Mm. We've been warned. Uh, Naimit has said this times without number, and then this just came came on us, and people are still just and, and we're act, to and find we're acting surprised. Absolutely, so, <laughs> so actually said. Well, it came as a surprise. It, it, to I us. mean, like it, it, when you get a response like that from government officials or from mm -hmm. the government, uh, people who are trying to supposed to, put, to take proactive measures to actually mm -hmm. forestall this, but we, we 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 always focus on how we respond to things with palliatives. Uh, exactly. You know, palliatives. So um, we were told this was going to happen, so we just folded our arms. We waited. Okay, let it happen, so that we can go. We give rice and mattresses. And then we move the victims to shelters, and well, that's not sustainable. That's how all, can it be? How can it be? It's I mean, like it's 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 really it's it's really sad when you look at it. And I, I do hope we can do something about our emergency response, Absolutely. our preparedness to face emergencies. Absolutely. And um, we're even we're lucky, um, I think, um, to a certain extent. I mean, like in this part of the world, we 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 have, don't have much natural disasters. I mean, like this, the flood is the major thing that we deal with. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have earthquakes. We have. Volcanic eruptions, exactly, well, it's, and um, so I think this is something that we can actually deal with. No, we need to do more in our emergency response. Mm. Absolutely, we really need to do that. Well, anyway, something that we also um, came about, or something that I've really noticed uh, now these days, is um, uh, the amount of cases that we hear about minors being sexually assaulted. Mm -hmm. It seems to be rising. Absolutely, uh, I would say, and it also seemed like um, in the news, despite the rise that we are seeing in the abuse of minors, mm. minors, on the other hand, are taking um, laws into their hands. Mm. Sometimes I don't know. Maybe it's because at the end of the day, they don't get to have justice. Exactly, and they just find ways to defend themselves. Mm. Because I think I've seen in one of the papers where I think a girl, or somebody murdered somebody. Mm. Was it her mother? Mother, or somebody? yeah, exactly. And you've, we've seen cases of even parents, mm. you know, abusing their children. So it sounds really absurd, yeah. but it, these things happen. Yeah, somebody actually, we, I think it was on Nation newspaper carried mm -hmm. this morning that um, he killed his mother for calling him a bastard. Yeah, see. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, so, and it, seriously, it, it, it is, it's, it's, it's not funny, mm -hmm. um, because really the, the, the smallest unit of society, we always say, is the home. It Absolutely. starts from the family, and once we lose that, then we, we've lost a lot of things. I mean, like, we just read a 49-year-old person raped a three-year-old girl, mm -hmm. but she died. I mean, how sad is that? It, it really, and, it's, and, and just like you said, I think there's this growing feeling that even if these cases are reported, people have been taken into custody, mm -hmm. taken to court, justice is still not served. And people have this sense that even if we do report it and mm -hmm. it does, have, nothing is going to happen. So let's at, just at do the end it ourselves. The, exactly, so why don't we just do it ourselves? I mean, like, it is, it is quite, quite appalling when you look at it. Well, I think we need to do a lot more uh, with sensitization and uh, just just giving them an avenue to mm. talk about their, you know, in this part of the world, it's not exactly. really very encouraging to talk about abuse, particularly mm. for minors and children. There's mm. cultural um, influence and mm. all of that. And of but course, the stigma from society. Mm -hmm. people Absolutely. Are, people are afraid of that Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Mm. Well, uh, very, very interesting stories uh, today. Well, mm. Saturdays are always very light. Yes. Um, there's this one about, you've seen the queues in town, right? Yes, <laughs> the queues have resurfaced. Mm -hmm. And so um, I heard, well, there's a truck 
Uh, so now we're seeing Dongote Simen shot down truck drivers block Lokoja Abuja. Highway. Yeah, I think uh, the, the major thing is the, is the Lokoja thing. A lot mm -hmm. of people actually said that. I think there was a statement that was released yesterday saying that it was because of the flooding in Lokoja that was actually stopping um, movement of, of, of products and of course with the with the truck drivers doing their own thing as mm. well i mean like just, it's just it making it's just making matters worse um, so I, it, there was it, it was a, a time there, there was a period of time that uh, the railways were tautened as 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 a, as, a, as the safest way to transport petroleum products i don't know what happened to that exactly and i think it actually started for a while but mm -hmm. it, does it, 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 it does stalled. it still work? i don't know i don't know because the pipelines are not happened. safe um we we all know that mm -hmm. i mean like yeah, pipeline vandalization is on the rise and so i think the railways actually have the capacity to take large quantities of petroleum products move them safely across the country well with the with the train operations now yes being, being what they are yes also, hmm. I think the, route, the road is the safest route for now. Well, it's turning out not to be <laughs> because Already the shows are flooded. Already black rockets <laughs> selling on the roadside yeah. and the prices are alarming. I don't know. Uh, we, I, I, but I, I still think we should have like a backup plan, mm. you know, for when these things happen. Exactly, when these things but happen. But unfortunately, it looks like we don't have enough, mm. you know, to go around so we just have to wait to keep moving well we just have to wait to keep on <laughs> moving i mean like for how long will we wait and wonder uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's it is it is it is quite unfortunate when you look at it and mm -hmm. um and well some some good news here on the front page of um, daily trust an 18 year old who, who actually made a water-powered rocket hmm. yes i mean like it um it's 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 quite interesting because when you you always look at we always see negative stories yeah. up and down. I mean, like flooding mm -hmm. here, money being stolen there, people being killed here Mentally and there. Mentally, it's, <laughs> it's draining. It, it's exhausting. I mean, I know a lot of people who who, who hardly watch the news or read newspapers yeah. because they get depressed. Absolutely. You know, Monday is World Mental Health Day. Uh -huh. So I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I think mean, so a, a, a lot of people, for their own mental health, yes. I think they stay away from the news because mm -hmm. it's how it's so depressing, really, when you when you see some of these stories. And um, well, it's good that we can actually have stories like this of a mm -hmm. ten-year-old boy who can. Um, uh, fabricate a, a, a rocket, uh, a water ro propelled rocket. Well, now my problem is, mm. okay, we've, we've identified this boy. Mm. What happens to the talent next? Do we harness that talent or what do we do with it? Because sometimes at the end of the day, okay, there's a boy that, that knows how to do this and you don't exactly. get to hear anything. Yeah, you just get one story about the guy and everybody goes, yay, and that's that. Mm -hmm. and, and nothing gets done. And I think I saw a story of someone, uh, a guy who fabricated a uh, tricycle. Yes, well. I think I saw that story. Yes, and there's this guy doing um, some great things with electric cars in Maiduguri. Absolutely. Yes. I saw one too, I think, in Nasara State. Exactly. I, I mean, think it's great to have a kind of a hub, mm. like an ideation hub where young people can come. Exactly. We have amazing minds. Of but, course. Well, it's of difficult course. getting all these people together and then give them a space to thrive and mm. just create amazing and things. Uh, exactly, an environment that we can actually do things the way we should and talent has never been our problem never no. had we have no. never had that Nigeria problem is one exactly of the most we, we, we exactly we have we have s amazing talent but unfortunately harnessing that talent is our problem well uh, we just have to keep moving i'd say yeah well i guess i i guess, well, I guess uh, that's you might you might call me uh I love to see things about women you know women yes. doing great things yes. um so i think guardian woman uh, Suray Ahmed, mm. she's talking about technology could mm. be a game changer for women in northern Nigeria. Mm. Uh, I've, I've, I've seen, you know, young northern women, you know, going into tech, mm. and, and it's, it's really a very interesting uh, area of endeavor. It sounds very complex mm. and difficult, but it's, it's really amazing that northern women are actually going into tech, and there's so much we can do with that. Exactly. At, at a point in time, it would have been unthinkable for mm -hmm. actually an, any kind of woman talk, I mean, like, to go into tech mm -hmm. because it seems like it's a boys' club. Absolutely. You know? But just like you said, lots and lots of women are now moving into tech mm -hmm. and making really groundbreaking moves absolutely you know? because there's there's very few people in that space yeah, exactly. so i think it gets a try even better yeah so i think it's it's a, it's it's really a good thing to see um, the amount of northern women taking mm -hmm. up tech uh, tech and and of course making huge differences not just going into tech absolutely. but of course making, making a, di a difference. making a difference so mm -hmm. i think um it's 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 actually something that uh, we we need to encourage 
you know, we, we really need to encourage our women to come to the fore mm -hmm. and, and, and do a lot of these things. We just talked about talent now. I mean, like, we have some of the most talented women in the world, you know, but sometimes um, our c culture, environment, uh, how things are done mm -hmm. stifles that. Yeah. And, and we, we really need to encourage our women to, to come out and, and, and do so much more. When it comes to when it comes to things like this, yeah, something that broke yesterday, another story that actually broke yesterday was um, was the ASU thing. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, like the appeal court telling ASU to yeah, go so back to yeah, class. Yeah. Yes, not saying that they can't appeal, mm -hmm. but they should go back to class yeah. and then appeal. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stopping them from appealing the judgment of the industrial court, but which mandated them. Yes, back. but they should go back to class first, and then they should appeal from the classroom, and then we'll see how how that goes. But we've been having strikes for so long. I just feel that we should just get done with this. E exactly. Whole and, and that's before the thing. we go back, we're, st <laughs> we're still going. We, we we keep going back to the yeah. same thing. I mean, like we we. We've been having strikes for decades, and the education sector is still what it is. It you is. know, it, it's not getting any better. Well, maybe with the 470 billion that they're getting next year. Well, it sounds like a lot of money, <laughs> but like I, I'm just money. I'm just thinking around. Okay, how does how does this happen? Okay, like the next administration has a lot of work to mm. do, and the president is is moving away from yes, this. Yes, well, that's the, that's, that is, that is the thing. That is the thing, because when you have, uh, when you have a government that is coming to the end of its tenure, mm -hmm. uh, you can't have any long-term policies. Because we, one of the problems that we actually have in Nigeria mm -hmm. is continuity. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. No matter how good a policy is, mm -hmm. a program is, mm -hmm. once uh, you're not the person who started it, mm -hmm. The next person comes in and, and you're just not inclined exactly so just, he just jettisons that idea away. and then and then we start a new I mean like really that is something we really need to look at we need to put the the, the interests of the country first Absolutely. not just our own personal glory but I really do hope so because we've seen this happen um, over and over again where mm. like you just said somebody an administration starts uh, maybe a policy or a program and then when the next administration comes mm. in they don't they don't really want to inherit that yes, they, you know they, that they, policy they or throw program. It out the window yeah yes and then they just toss it aside mm. and then maybe kickstart theirs I just I think it would be great to have a kind of a framework mm. that that um, can affect everybody that yeah. can be beneficial at least let's have a blueprint a template mm -hmm. that we can actually follow to say okay fine this is what we're using regardless of who is there absolutely. we will actually use this to get what we to get where we mm -hmm. need to get mm -hmm. and we, that is something we need to look at absolutely well we've been talking about the newspaper stories on the headlines of the newspapers this morning on a daybreak extra we'll take a short break and when we return we'll take up uh, one of the first issues that we're going to discuss this morning so do stay with us Not necessarily uh, tribal or regional.
All right, welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is uh, Daybreak, daybreak Extra. extra. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you're yeah, so, you're so, so used, used to Daybreak. To daybreak. <laughs> so, okay, this is my first time on Daybreak Extra. You're so. doing fantastic, by okay, the way. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so let's go into uh, the discussion proper this morning, uh, talking about customer service. Now, Customer Service Week is an international celebration of the importance of customer service and of the people who serve and support customers on a daily basis. Thousands of companies around the world celebrate Customer Service Week. They represent leading financial, healthcare, insurance, manufacturing, retailing, hospitality, communications, nonprofit, and educational organizations, as well as government agencies and others. Now, to discuss the importance of customer service, we have Ifa Yumuki, Customer Success Manager, uh, yeah, Customer Success Manager, FlexiSaf Edisoft Limited. Thank you so much for coming on Daybreak. Thank you. And uh, we also have Faisal Sadiq, he's a customer service professional. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Thank you for having us. Okay, let me start with you, um, Ifa. Would you say Nigeria has a relatively great customer service relationship? Well, very interesting question. Um, so if looking at my, you know, speaking from my experience in the field of customer service, customer support and customer experience, mm -hmm. um, and my interactions with a lot of brands here in Nigeria, I'd say that um, uh, we're not where we are supposed to be in terms of customer service because a lot of brands still don't see the importance of, you know, prioritizing customer service for their business. And that's why you see a lot of customers complain about the brand experience, about the experience interacting with product, mm -hmm. interacting with businesses, and uh, you know they still feel that you know businesses need to prioritize customer service and ensure that you know customers are happy and they are getting that beautiful experience. Okay, great. All right, um, Felisa, let me come to you. You are someone who has actually, um, ha you've actually had the experience both from within and without been a customer service professional for, for a while. Um, you, you've worked in um, uh, public institutions, you've worked in the private sector. How would you rate the, 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 the difference between how customer service is being taken in the public sphere and the, pub, the private aspect of it? Well, uh, thank you for the question. Mm. So it's relative, actually. Okay. Um, if we take the government sector, for example, that's the public sector. Mm. We have um, basically the what we what we see in Nigeria as the core civil service, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So we take for instance the ministries, you know, and agencies related to that. We also have the professional agencies. If you take for example FIRS, CBN, mm -hmm. NCC, mm. that are industry specific. Right. So from my experiences, you will find that those who are professional so to speak, mm. you tend to have them to have better customer service okay. you know, approach. Mm. Mm. Probably because they are, they, are, they are kind of narrowed to a particular industry. Mm. So they, 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 they tend to be a kind of professionalism, understanding what services mm. you need to provide and all that. Mm. So I think they have a better sensitization. Okay. To that regard, okay. you know, then that's in contrast to what we refer to as the core civil exactly, service. Exactly. Oh, exactly. oh I yeah, see. Exactly. Very oh. interesting. Mm. Well, let me ask if I eat this. <laughs> There's, um, I tried to get something on Instagram, and yeah. then I've never gotten anything from that uh, place before. And then I reached out to them. And then the lady was so nice. What I wanted, they didn't have that. Yeah. But because of how she, she related to me, I really liked it. She followed up and then she asked so many questions and I felt at ease and I felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. She presented a different you know, brand to me and I said, just because she was nice and so sweet to me, I was going to buy that brand. Do people in Nigeria actually know how important it is you know, to relatively speak to people in a way that can, they can actually relate to, and that could actually help them patronize your brand. Do we know how important that is? Well, I would say no, because, you know, still going back to the initial question around um, brand experience, um, there's still businesses, people, you know, people behind these businesses still don't, you know, have that, you know, right mentality on how to approach customer service. And that's why a lot of businesses are feeling today, because, you know, 
currently, you know, with the advent of the digital, you know, world, a lot, of, you know, a lot of customers now have the power to choose the, their their mm -hmm. preferred brand, and then, you know, they invest so much in the experience. How do I? How do I feel? How do I? How do I? How am I addressed? How am I talked to? You know, the culture Absolutely. also plays a part in mm -hmm. in the area of customer service, yes. right? People are really paying attention to that. And if you're not speaking to customers the way they want to mm -hmm. to be sp uh, to, sp to be spoken to, then you would, you are likely going to lo lose them. So I would say that um, we need to do more in terms of um, our approach, our engagement, our communication, the style of communication, mm -hmm. and how we also you know identify the different customer sets in our own field of business, ensuring that we're able to speak to, to speak to them the way they would love to be speak, spoken to. But does it just end there? Yeah. Does it just end with speaking with the customer? Yeah. You're like, okay, um, I, I, you, customer calls in, yeah. or I call a customer, and we engage each other. Does, 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 the, does the customer service actually end there? Mm -hmm. You're someone who has actually worked in different um, sectors, all right? You've been in banking. Yeah. Right now, you're currently in ed tech. Yeah. How will you rate the, 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 the different styles of customer relations when it comes to these two different sectors? Because one, you have a situation whereby, all right, in the banking sector, mostly the customers come to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. You know, you just advertise where this bank bring your money and you stay there and you wait for them and they bring <laughs> their money. And they bring, their money, they bring their money to you. But whereas now in EdTech, you have to go out, you have to get, get new customers, mm -hmm. bring people, make, convince them to come in and then convince them to stay. How different is that? Great, interesting question. So I would like to start from the from your first question, talking about you know the communication aspect of it. Mm. Of it, it's not really about you know communicating with customers. Mm. It's a whole lot. Okay. It starts from you know the whole the customer journey map, starting from the first contact to sales to supports your onboarding to engagement. So it's a, a big experience. So people. People tend to invest more. People, people, uh, customers are really interested in the entire experience, not just the communication. Mm. And that starts from the from the initial sales when the salespeople reach out to the customers, you know, talking to them and seeing how they can get 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 onboarded. And then you, you know, the entire onboarding experience, the support, you know, product adoption, driving engagement, making sure that the customer sees value. So it's beyond communication. That's mm. that's the aspect of customer service. And you know, what we do at Flex is have more. We we focus more on the customer success experience, right from the from the very beginning till you know uh, to, uh, to the end phase, and then you know continuous engagement, ensuring that we're able to make those customers, you know, um, uh, how do I put it, uh, you know, advocate for the brand. Okay. Yeah. So uh, talking about the comparison between what we see in the banking experience and the edtech space, I'd say um, if I'm to, if I'm to compare that, I would say in the banking experience a little bit. Um, you know, physical because you get to meet the customer, and you know, mm -hmm. the customer is not not just reading your communication, but your body language, your presentation, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, the banking in the banking sector, people focus more on how the cost, the bank, the ba uh, the banking industry focus more on how you know the customer is felt, how, how the customer feels the environment, how they get in, how they access the product, mm -hmm. how they you know engage in terms of their account, maybe mm -hmm. any issues they're having. But then in the edtech space, it's, it's way beyond you know that experience. Mm -hmm. It talks about we, we are talking about the product itself okay. how customers you know want to perceive the product how to give feedback on the product how we engage them how we drive because you know you have different users mm. uh, in the, in the space not just one when you're building a solution you're not focused on just one customers mm. you have a whole lot of users mm. attached to that product so it's not just one person you have to ensure that that experience you know is consistent across across the board okay. so I'd say very, that you know uh, in the in the ed tech space it's 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 more you know a holistic approach towards well. you know driving <laughs> so it's, 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 more, it's, it's more engaging yeah more engagement yeah, I would uh, say uh, that. well okay. I would say that's quite very interesting from his you know assertions let me throw this at Faisal mm. in corporate in corporate jobs um, they are very very uh, typical instances where employees and employers there's this there's this gap you know that exists between employees and employers. How um, can the relationship or that gap, you know, be filled with, with, with particularly with communication between employees and you know, employees. upper management, you know, and all of that? How can we better improve that and just make it work efficient? Okay. So since we're discussing customer service, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so there's um, the internal customer. Mm -hmm. aspect. Mm -hmm. So we need, to, we need to see it from that perspective, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because even as employees mm -hmm. working in the same organization, right. we are customers to each other. Absolutely. So we need to see ourselves as customers, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. customer service is about making your customer happy, helping Absolutely. him to succeed. Mm. So 
um, for corporate organizations, mm -hmm. I think they need to adopt the open door policy. It helps a lot. Because when you have, uh, of course, for you to, to be organized, you need to have hierarchy from the CEO to the directors to down to mm -hmm. your housekeepers, for Absolutely. example. But if you have an open door policy that your housekeeper can go to your CEO, approach your maybe your, your CEO or a director and tell him, give him feedback, for example, how to, how to succeed and all that. So I think uh, you've opened the door of communication. You give people that confidence to approach you, to give you feedback, because mm -hmm. it's all about feedback. Mm -hmm. You can only improve when you have uh, feedback, actually. So if you have that open door policy, you uh, improve communication. And I think that will help corporate organizations to actually bridge that gap. Of course, uh, you have policies and all that to abide by. But I mm -hmm. think that uh, open communication is very important. And as long as you see yourself as internal customers, mm -hmm. I'm providing service to my colleague. Mm -hmm. So how do I help that colleague succeed, mm -hmm. actually? So if we look at it from that perspective, I think corporate organizations will have a better working environment. All right. Um, I, don't, I don't even know who I'm going to throw this question <laughs> to right now. Um, Maybe both I of think them. I'm, throwing, I'm throwing it to the both of you. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. But I'm going to start this face also. We cascade down to you. Technology. How important is it in customer service? Because we know there are lots of customer service um, solutions out there. Well, some have, have been there, some have been scrapped, and there's this gradual movement into a lot of different other aspects of well. How important is technology to customer service, and are we utilizing it in Nigeria? Well, thank you. So it is extremely important, mm -hmm. actually, because in the world of today, you cannot run away from technology, yeah. actually. Yeah. And as they say, data mm. has really superseded oil. Yeah. Right now, it's mm -hmm. the new oil, they say. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> so um, technology allows you to gather data. Because for you to, to measure how well you are doing, there are some matrices mm -hmm. you need to measure, right? right? You need to get feedback. You need to get uh, things like net promoter score, your customer service index, mm -hmm. a lot of other data, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the right technology, you will not be able to get accurate data mm -hmm. to help you improve, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that being said, uh, the, the, the second question is about are we utilizing, are we utilizing it? it? We are, mm. but there's, there's a lot to do, actually, okay. yeah. right? Mm. Um, so, of course, we, we visit websites, mm. you know, and the, the, the closest example I can give you, mm. in most cases, you see a, a chat box popping mm. up, right? Mm. And someone tells you it takes four minutes to respond okay. or five minutes to respond. Mm. And then a chatbot tells you hello, mm. and then you mm -hmm. maybe drop your email and you mm. type your email, and then you are seeing four minutes or five minutes mm. at the bar, mm. but it takes like thirty minutes for <laughs> for the no, next to come, message yeah. to come to you. You know, so we are not really utilizing it the way we should, uh, even though a lot of other organizations, because you can't generalize actually. Mm. Mm. There, while some are using it mm. effectively, some mm. are not actually. Mm. But I think. Uh, Generally speaking, mm. we still have a lot to do. All okay. right. When you talk about specific organizations mm -hmm. utilizing it, if I was nodding vigorously, <laughs> <laughs> I was, no, I was nodding vigorously. I mean, like uh, you're talking from uh, from a place of experience now. Yeah. Mm. So just to add to what my colleague uh, Felix has said, um, in terms of uh, the importance of technology in customer service, I think it's extremely very important mm. because you, you already talked about the area of. Um, uh, you know, data and all of that. But mm. then I'm, I'm going to be talking more on the area of scalability. Uh, and and that's, you know, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I still feel that the question you ask is a bit subjective based on the type of businesses that mm -hmm. we see out there. Mm. So uh, in terms of tech, you know, it's a, a bit expensive. And, you mm -hmm. know, given the current uh, economic yeah. realities, mm. it's a bit difficult for businesses to, you know, subscribe to tools, you know, advanced tools and mm. robust mm -hmm. customer relationship management uh, tools. So people really go for the basics. Okay. Uh, that's talking from the business point. And then for, for the customer's point, people are still gradually getting used to Oh, I need. I can easily just chat on. Most people would like to walk into an experience center to mm. have their issues resolved, but mm. people are gradually shifting their mindset towards utilizing technology. So, uh, so we 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 expect to see you know more adoption uh, at least from people here in Nigeria. Okay. So, but in terms of the relevance of tech, you know, mm. to uh, delivering exceptional services, I think um, we are not there. Okay. But then we are seeing brands, you know trying to, you know, you know, subscribe to it, you mm -hmm. know, buy, get more buying decision in ensuring that, you know, they're able to utilize these tools. But now, 
how relevant, how important is this tool to business? Like I mentioned earlier, you know, it still depends on the uh, level of the business. So okay. if uh, maybe a business is in a gr is growth phase, or they are currently, you know, in an advance and they have a lot of customers, mm. and then how do you ensure? How do you how do you leverage tech to you know to scale? Technology, we know we have the AI bot and all that that can even do the talking, the engagement, irrespective of you know you know having someone behind the computer. You mm. can have an AI. You can auto automate a bot to respond to general inquiries that customers would have. So I think it's really very important, and you know business businesses need to you know adopt the use of it. Mm. Well, so let me just ask you, would you say um, cybercrime is one of the reasons why people just prefer to go physical instead of just chatting mm. online or just sending their messages, particularly when it comes to bank transactions and all of that? Yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll lean towards that a little bit. People are still, especially in Nigeria, people are still very, you know, scared of you know, using, especially when you have to do, do with exchanging your personal information online. Mm. People are a little bit worried. But then I think businesses are now, you know, recognizing that fact that it's important for them to drive awareness and let yeah. people know that, look, these are the type of information you can share online. These are the type of information cannot. you know you should not mm -hmm. or you you cannot share online. And we won't ask you. And you know, there there's there's this reinforcement in that communication, making sure users are aware of what information they need to share online, just to encourage them to always want to use you know digital technologies. Mm. Okay. okay. So you touched you touched on the issue of um, on the aspect of, of data, gathering data, and um, how important it is to 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 actually to customer service in general. But it's not just gathering the data, is it? You need to gather actionable data that you can actually work with. Because you can have all the data in the world, but if you don't know how to use it, then it's, 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 it's practically useless. Exactly. Are we moving towards that direction? Because just like you said, we're using technology, but we're not using it to the extent that we're supposed to. A lot of us, um, a, lot, a lot of companies out there just make the show of, okay, I'm subscribing to this, I'm using this one because that person is using it, I'm using it as well. Yeah. But we don't actually use it to the, to the, we don't maximize it. So uh, the data we do gather, how important is it to what we need to do to get to the customer? So thank you very much. So I think that's, um, that's very important actually. So this now takes us to the data analytics part actually. Um, when you gather data, you need to make meaningful. You, may, you need to make it uh, meaningful mm. uh, into. I mean, to convert it into a meaningful information, right? That will guide decisions. Mm. Because if if your business wants to move fast, you want to keep up with the with the trend. You need to act fast. So it's about decision making. So now we are moving into uh, data driven decisions, right? And. Uh, just like you said, it's not just having the data, but utilizing, utilizing, it, uh, utilizing it, right? So uh, you need to apply some data analytical uh, skills, right? And that's why it is very important to train customer service professionals mm. to know what data you need to collect, how you need to collect it. Uh, and of course, collect, collecting data doesn't really have to go through some technology. Okay. It could just be a verbal conversation yeah. that okay. we do. It could be uh, physical interviews. You could mm -hmm. uh, run some survey, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, in fact, now that um, we are, a lot of companies are even trying to drive self-service, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. So from, from, from how the customers engage, for those who are into products, IT mm -hmm. products, from the way customers engage with your products, you know, even cars, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, of course, the mo mo modern, mo modern cars, the modern technology, there are a lot of data, collect uh, data collection tools, mm -hmm. how you drive, where you follow, you know, and all that. And all these data are collected, analyzed. So uh, if you have the proper analytics, then you can convert that data to, into a meaningful, mm. uh, actionable insight, actually. Then that mm. will actually allow. And uh, those are data, like I said, it, is, uh, it, it leads to data-driven decisions. Mm. And from the data you gather, you, you'll be able to quickly see, OK, this is what I need to continue mm. doing. This is where I need to improve or to even stop doing some things. Mm. Well, about. looks like if I wants to say something, what <laughs> <laughs> you about that? So just, just wanted to touch on you know some of the things you, you mentioned that you know talking about the product space, like mm. building digital product. Mm. Um, data is data is something that guides you know the way products are built. 
And there's this saying that you have to always build with the customer in mind. And for you mm. to be able to build with the customer in mind, you mm. need to always hear what they say, mm. get feedback and know wh what area you need to prioritize and how you need to guide the development process of your product. So mm. I think you know, <laughs> it's very important that you, know, you, you know, uh, constantly collect that data from customers and you know, not just collecting it, mm. actioning the, 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 the feedback that customers are giving to guide you know, the product uh, delivery roadmap. Mm. Okay. All right, I have a lot of questions. But anyway, um, let me, <laughs> let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's talk about this now. Um, I, want to, I want to narrow it down a little bit. Oh, sh oh am I broadening it up? I don't, I don't even know which one I'm doing. Um, customer service has evolved yeah. from customer relations, Customer, customer service, um, uh, 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 support. customer, customer support, support, and when now we're talking about customer experience. Yes. I think that's this is that's the latest it's now. Yes, yeah, yeah. CX. <laughs> yes, we're talking about CX now. That's customer experience. As a customer success manager now that you are yeah. in the ed tech space in Nigeria, how do you keep up? with all these changes that are actually happening. Because I know back in the days when we used to, when, um, when uh, there's this software that is actually was used in banks mostly and, and, and sometimes in telecom, single view. Okay. It, was, it was like the next best thing. Yeah. You know, it was absolutely fantastic. But now when you even look, when you look like at it, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> when you look at it, it's just like, I mean, it's, 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 it's still something that you actually even want to look at. So how do you keep up? Being the customer success manager that you are, how do you keep up and stay at the top of your game to make sure that, as an individual, you 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 stay you stay you stay keyed in. That means you stay plugged in and give more value for your organization. All right, it's a very interesting question. Mm. Okay, so um, this is one reason why you know, um, as a customer success uh, professional, mm. I always advise businesses. When it comes to hiring for your customer experience department, mm. you don't just go for any other employee. You have to mm -hmm. go for someone who is passionate about, about the customers, mm. right? Someone who loves to see their customers su succeed. Mm. And you know, someone who is also pa passionate about the industry. So I'm someone who is not just, um, it's not, it's not, customer success is not just a career for me. It's something I love doing. Mm. In fact, when I work, it's, it, when I even, when I work, mm. it's not like I'm working. I'm doing my best, I'm doing my best job. So I, 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 I always stay, one, one thing I always do is I always stay abreast with the industry, you know, on LinkedIn, connect with folks, not just in Nigeria, in Africa, in mm. Europe, in the, you know, Asia, all of, the, all of the different, you know, regions, making sure that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping tab with the trends, what's happening, what's the new technology, mm. what's the new ideology, best practices. what's the best practice, the mm. new strategies that people are, you know, implementing and why are they implementing it and, mm. and in what space, and, you know, mm. you know, because it's very important you also look at what space, you don't just go copy strategy and say, Oh, mm. because they use in X Y Z country. I'm con I'm I'm mm -hmm. going to also try to use that in my own right. in my own mm. space. You need to see. In, you need to understand the why. Why are they using it? Mm. And then see if it fits in. See if you can tweak. See what you know. Best practice you can you know, pick from those strategies or those you know. Uh, um, how do I put it? Those uh, those adoption processes that they are they are putting into place and see what you can bring into your business. So I try to you know I try to you know keep tabs with my with folks out there and also take certification courses mm. to help improve you know my in my field and then you know bring all of those knowledge to to the content I work for. All right, all right. Your current job now actually requires you to deal with I think um, a larger customer base. Yeah. Um, being in the ed tech space, you, you, you deal with schools yeah. and um, education is, educational institutions mostly, yeah. um, both government and private, public and private, yeah? Sure. So, and you know, just like um, Faisal pointed out earlier, there's, there's, there's a difference between uh, customer service when it comes to the public sector and the private sector right. uh, uh, and all that. So at Flexisaf, how are you able to, to, to make that dichotomy? How are you able to, to make your team respond effectively because I know you handle, you do things like, um, um, apart from the products that you actually yeah. have, you actually manage products for other uh, organizations as well. For example, the NECO yeah. thing that you guys do. Yeah. So how do you compartmentalize or how do you specialize your team <laughs> or streamline your team to actually deal with these different sets of customers, you know, wanting virtually the same thing, but in different ways? Yeah. Okay. So that's what we call customer segmentation. Okay. Um, so a process of customer segmentation helps you to identify different buyer personas. So like we have um, different products, like you know, I mentioned earlier, we have 
a product focused on the primary you know, and secondary schools. We have product focused on the tertiary institution. Mm -hmm. And then we have the project itself called NECO. So these different products have different customer uh, types. Mm. So starting from the uh, primary schools, and we, we all know how, you know, oh, at the age. Well. So with the primary, secondary, we already do know how the customers behave. And then when it comes to the tertiary institution, mostly the public institution. And we know what happens here in public Nigeria when it comes to the public institutions. Mm. People are not really keyed into their, you know, taking responsibility. So for the, pri for the uh, primary and secondary, it's usually private schools. And there's always this hand-holding from the management in ensuring that, you know, whatever uh, uh, digital uh, tool they are subscribed to, they're able to use it because they are paying for it. Mm -hmm. And they know what it, they know yeah. what it means to pay, to for, pay, those, for, to pay yeah. for those things. So, you know, there's, there's this cooperation from, from uh, customers. So we, you know, we pretty much have a way of, you know, engaging those type of customers. But when it comes to the, uh, the public institutions, mm -hmm. <laughs> requires close marketing, close engagement, continuous, you know, interaction, making sure that all stakeholders are you know, on the same table and we are engaging them you know in a very consistent and scalable way and then when it comes to the project we already know we know our type of customers we know mm. the you know we know the interest that, that plays around uh, that particular project and we know the the key stakeholders who we need to engage who we need to share data with who we need to you know show the impact of what mm. we have done so far and you know making sure that there, that there's this close relationship mm. with those parties so coming back into the internal team um, we have people who are specialized in different um, phases of customer success. So we try as much as possible to deploy, you know, uh, talent in those different customer mm -hmm. segments. We have people who are more of conversational, who would, they are more of, you know, stakeholder management. We mm -hmm. deploy them in the public uh, public uh, customer segment. And those who are more technical, uh, but technically sound, mm -hmm. we put them in the in the personal, in the private, you know, uh, uh, customer segment because it's more of, oh, we have an issue, we need this issue solved, solve it. But mm. the other product is more stable, and then the challenge is how do we engage with the users of this mm. solution? How do we make sure we can enforce them, we can, we can, we can drive best practice? Mm. So it's more of engagement. So you have to put people who love to talk, people mm. who are, you know, people person, people that can conversate and drive mm. engagement. So that's how we pretty much set up the team, and each of our products, we have different customer success team key to those products to ensure that our customers are able to use, uh, so to, to, to maximize the use of the brand, get you know, mm. maximum value from this product. Sounds like well, a lot of work. Sounds like a plan, I must say. You have your hands full. Already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, okay, since so we're still, to, okay, you want, I want to say to something? To yeah. 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 On, the, on, on the experience that he mentioned. Yeah. So whether we're looking at it from the public sector or from the private sector, mm. it's all about providing value, mm. Mm. right, at the end of the day. And that's why it is called experience, because mm. whoever is coming to you for a service, it's really coming for, to have a good experience, mm. right? Right. So it is very important for 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 your customers, be it in the private or public sector, mm. for them to have that good experience. You need to carry them along mm. right. from the onset. Yeah. Okay. So uh, for government, for example, mm. if we're, if we're doing pol if we're making policies, uh, of course we, we we do practice it in Nigeria. Mm. But at the end of the day, uh, probably we have a lot of policies that we may have to review actually, but. From 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 when we're even conceiving the policies, mm. I think the citizens have to be carried along. You know, mm. uh, engage because after all, you are providing those services for them. Everybody is trooping to Dubai to mm. <laughs> from, from, from all parts of the world. Exactly, <laughs> their number one business they say is to make their their citizens happy. Mm. Absolutely, and they are doing everything. Mm. So the why, like you said, is to make them happy. Okay. Okay. Right. So what are we really doing to make to our make customers happy. happy, whether government or private? I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. So now talking about making customers happy, we're still talking customer service week. Um, how important is it for organizations to actually celebrate this day? It's very important, actually, because uh, I think it provides the opportunity to, to collaborate, actually. Uh, like I said earlier, you are, you are, it's, it's also uh, if first uh, an opportunity to have first hand information mm. because it gives opportunity for organizations to interact with their customers you know uh, during the customer service week we've seen people visiting organizations mm. and organizations inviting their customers to come right. and have even have an idea of how we do serve things. you how we produce those things that serve you so i think uh, it is very important it brings about collaboration mm. and it also uh, gives the professionals mm. that uh, belonging you know that feeling of belonging to say yes I'm really proud of my job, and this mm -hmm. is the impact I'm mm -hmm. making. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, people. So, it's a, so in, in effect, it's, it's a way of making the customer feel part of the organization. Yeah, so that's um, just like um, the customer service has actually evolved from being customer service, customer relations to customer success. I mean, like we succeed together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, oh, all right. So, um, I think this year. I, I don't know whether it's because of, of more awareness or something like that. I think this year's Customer Service Week, I think it's, it's, it has been more widely celebrated mm -hmm. than, than, than any other. Last year, we did have Customer Service Week, but it was not as widely, because we, we saw it on social media. Everywhere. Lots of organization yeah. posting mm -hmm. photos, doing lots of things. Traditional way. Exactly, it exactly. Really exactly. Nice. Because <laughs> even here, we went big. We went, we, we, we went <laughs> big here as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we went absolutely big here as well. You know? um, so is this, is this, um, is this uh, uh, an indication that we are having more awareness? when it comes to how important the customer is. Because we, we, I think there was a period of time where we're just in, in, interested in getting the customer's money. Hmm. You come, you pay us, you buy, you, we sell something to you, you go, <laughs> that's, that's that. You know, we don't care about the relationship. That was when CRM came in, we started talking about customer relationship management, you know. Then we started talking about um, customer loyalty, um, turning customers into advocates, and, and, and all that. So is this an indication that we're becoming more aware of how important a customer really is? Because I believe we've been paying lip service to it for a very long time. Yeah. The customer is always right, and we leave it like that. <laughs> the customer is always on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So is this an indication that we're, we're moving towards that? Well, um, yes, I would mm. say, because um, organizations, brands, we're beginning to understand that uh, the power lies with the customer. Mm. So if, if, if you don't pay attention to the customer, you'll be out of business. Mm. And we've seen that happen, you know, you know, especially in Nigeria, where businesses you know, don't prioritize customer experience. Mm. And then, you know, that leads to negative experience uh, for our customers. And mm. then when customers get that negative experience, mm. they are most likely to, to leave that business. And, and word of mouth is very dangerous. Exactly. It's also very dangerous because I know I personally have stopped using a product or stopped going somewhere for service mm. from or not even go, go there as well from what somebody has told oh, me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you go somewhere, you go you have a terrible experience and you tell me those oh people are not don't go there. <laughs> yeah, this is rubbish. And I won't. You understand? So I think word of mouth is, is it's it's a, it's a very, 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 very powerful tool. And uh, it's only through customer experience that we can actually yeah. make that work for us. Yeah, just to also add that, um, you know, we've seen cases where, you know, uh, maybe someone goes to a brand and then mm. tries to do business. And then at the end of the day, maybe uh, something went wrong and the organizations, they don't really prioritize and manage that issue uh, mm -hmm. you know, properly. Mm. And then yeah. the next thing that customer would do is to just go on Twitter and just... Exactly. Yeah, boom. I think I've seen that <laughs> Yes. Exactly. Like, okay. it, it, happen, like, okay, it, it happens a lot. I'm going to drag them. I'm like, okay, drag them. They'll tell you, no, 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 please, can we? We are going to whatever it is. We are going to solve it. Even if it's giving you that product for free, mm. we will do that because they know the implication of having that issue go viral. Mm. So businesses are beginning to see the importance of prioritizing their customers, mm. celebrating them. You know, not, not just say, oh, it's about oh your money. Let me be paying for that. I'm giving mm. you what you know. Mm -hmm. Prioritizing, making customers feel valued right. like feeling you know like oh i'm associated with a brand and that mm -hmm. goes into the customer experience as, as well that we're talking about personalizing the experience mm. oh you know it's beyond oh their customers people would send in communication and say their customers they address a lot of people mm. now you need to speak to the your different customer set mm. like oh i'm sending an, a message to ibrahim mm. hi ibrahim that personalized experience that's what people yeah. want to see and mm. then you know the more of that the more you do that the more customers feel you know mm. attached to your brand Absolutely. and i think it, this is something that you know brands are beginning to, to <laughs> yeah, 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 because we're talking about the, the entire experience, so right? You know, they say uh, businesses sell emotions. Actually, not yeah. really, not really. Not I, think, product, I think that's. I think that's it because <laughs> re, uh, when, when that lady spoke to me, I, I didn't want to buy that product, but because of how she spoke to me, I was like, I have to buy yeah, this product. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, so let's talk about. Uh, you talked about personalized experience now. Um, I, we're, we're slightly running out of time, but let's, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. The main reason why some people or some organizations run away from that is because they believe it's actually quite expensive to, 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 to like personalize or tailor experiences. But um, some actually believe that it's the easiest thing for you to do because yeah. going back to what we're saying about data collection, collecting the right form of data, mm -hmm. because, um, for example, banks, they've got that, that, that they've, got, they've got that worked out. 
you know, they have your name, they have your date of birth. Mm -hmm. You wake up in the morning on your birthday, you see a text message. message. Yes, <laughs> happy birthday. You so know, nice. they call you by name and they tell you happy birthday and, mm -hmm. and, and, and this and that. I mean, like, just like you say, they sell emotions. You understand? Yeah. And I don't think that is such an expensive endeavor to do. When you get that data, you harvest it, and, um, and you can automate uh, a, a particular solution to do that for you. Well, like I said, uh, it's about value, mm. right? And value is subjective, actually, okay. mm. right? Um, we can buy the same thing. Mm. I, I, I could buy it for 1,000 Naira, mm. depending on the value attached to it. Right. And you can also buy it for 10,000 Naira. Mm. Probably that's the value attached to it. Exactly. Right? So money is just a measure. Mm. Right. So um, if organizations can actually see it from the value perspective, mm. what value are we offering the customer? What value are we also getting, getting. from it? Right. Mm. Um, because uh, it is the responsibility of the customer service professionals. Mm. Right. To because after all, for us, uh, for, for, for businesses, they are selling value mm -hmm. to the, you know. So when buyers buy the value and you have users, so it is also important, right, that you, 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 you convince the buyer of that value, right? So you, you, you try to help the users mm. to convince the buyer that he's actually getting value from whatever it is you're selling. Mm. So if yeah. I just <laughs> before we go. So, so I just want to add to, to, to that. So um, when it comes to, you know, um, the cost of digital solutions that mm -hmm. enables you to provide that personal experience. Right. I'd like to defeat a little bit from your point. Mm -hmm. I think um, from what I've seen, my engagement with startups, especially in, in, in Nigeria, um, they do not, you know, I said something earlier to Brian, I said mm. having the right person lead your customer experience strategy. Very important. People will understand the, uh, you know, the business of customer service, how you need to, what tools you need, the people you need, the process you need to put in place. Mm. So when you talk about having expertise, expertise, I'm sure they are where they are exposed to the, uh, varieties of tools, like, you know, there are some tools that, we have a tool that costs $60. We have another tool that can do the same, and it costs about twenty dollars mm. to, to do. So you having well, I'll get that twenty dollar <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you yeah. having the right mm. people lead your mm. customer experience strategy. I think that's one way to you know to get that mm. that be sorted out because mm. you have the right person who knows the the right the, the type of tool to, to adopt, mm. who knows the type of data to collect, who knows how to action those data, who knows how to put the process in place, mm. knows what you know what process you need to prioritize at the stage of the business. Mm. Okay. That would help you, you know, um, achieve the the personalized experience we're talking about. Mm. Because if you have if you have you can have the tool, mm. you can have the right tool, mm -hmm. but you don't have the, the right, right people. Oh, yeah. The right people or mm. the right yeah. process. process exactly. Yeah. So you need to have the right person who would drive your, mm. uh, your, your customer experience uh, strategy to mm. ensure that you know, you're able to deliver your, your confidence objectives. I really don't oh. want this conversation. Honestly, yeah. I, I, really, I really <laughs> wish, I, I, I wish we actually had more time because I mean like this is a very, very, very um, interesting, it's a very yeah, interesting and very wide. Yeah. You know, we have different aspects of it that we need to touch on. And I do believe, I'm, I'm very sure that we are going we'll to continue to this conversation back. again. We're going to bring you guys back and Absolutely. we'll talk customer service. Um, if I, very, very nice having you on the show. I mean like, learned a lot already <laughs> <laughs> yeah Faisal it's been great having you on the show and um, it's been a wonderful conversation so thank you very much gentlemen it's a pleasure having you. Thank you. Uh, all right so it's still daybreak extra on uh, trust TV now we're going to move to something slightly different um, men are known to be proposing to the ladies when it comes to marital relationships we all know that. But with each passing day since the feminist revolution of the 70s, there have been noticeable shifts in that tradition as the world is gradually being subtly introduced to the idea that it may just be fine for a lady to propose to a man as well. So what do people think of the possibility of having ladies propose to them? All right. So Fatima Musa actually went around to seek the opinion of people. Let's take a look. Can a woman propose marriage to a man? Well, that's the question of the day. In some parts of the world, proposing marriage is not a big deal. But some religion, tradition, and culture thinks otherwise. Let's find out from people what they think about this. For many, women proposing to their male partners is nothing new, as it has been witnessed in many parts of the world. To this group of people, as far as the result is positive, it doesn't matter who pops the question. Yes, of course. Like, maybe you are in love with somebody and the person is not um, financially okay and you are okay. It's not a bad deal. 
But here in Nigeria, we like we take it as a wrong thing for men. Yeah, it's normal. It's only in this uh, part of the world that you see women feeling inferiority complex when it comes to issue of proposing to marriage. In many camps, like um, uh, some uh, developed countries, you see how bold the woman will be to propose to a man for marriage. We are in a modernized society now. What happens previously uh, leads to our culture. People feel that, ah, as a man, you're supposed to do everything. But with modernization and uh, the way it works now, it's easy. If a woman can take that bold step and hax, then before a woman can hax a man, will you marry me? Do you understand? Being in a relationship, you know the kind of man you're going out with. On the other side of the divided are those who see it as a no-no since the responsibility of popping the question rests on the men. To them, religious and traditional belief system restricts them from such modern-day contradictions of age-long practices. Well, it all depends. Some people might think that the person, the lady is desperate, that she doesn't have self-respect, based on the African culture, you know, we are Africans, yes, but it all depends on personal opinion, you understand? Well, I don't think it's okay, according to my religion. I'm a Christian and I don't, I don't think I've ever come across any place in the Bible where a woman approached a man. Because there will not be respect and he will not know the value of the woman. That's why. Well. well, there you have it. Some people say it's okay for a woman to propose marriage to a man due to civilization, while some say it's against their religion and tradition. Fatima Musa, Trust TV News, Abuja. The king of a tribe, I can live it like me. Tell the trend about my style ain't free. Never see me living man seriously. I'm just trying to live well and like experience it. But I've been through the highs, but through the lows. That's just life, man. That's how it goes. Moving with the current, how I'm moving with the flows. And my future's looking bright now. You see the glow. Welcome back. Here's still Daybreak Extra right here on Trust TV. So that was quite an interesting report on marriage proposals there. Oh. Um, well, maybe with the fem feminist movement, we are seeing a Is gradual it really shift. because of the feminist movement? Of course, it's because of the feminist saying? movement. I mean, like women, what a man can do, a woman can also do. Well, almost but back, better. back here at home, do you it still just doesn't <laughs> sound, sound right. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe we can, we can actually have that. So now let's switch a little bit to entertainment right here. Um, this morning and and um, of course um, we were being joined by um, Afolabi Oluatusin who is um, also better known as DJ Holoski mm, all right really. yes he is a DJ an MC mm. a presenter That's a lot. and of course a producer as well sounds like a lot of work wearing different mm -hmm. hats like that it's good to have you on the show thank you thank all you for having me it's good to be here first of all before we go anywhere what do you think about women proposing to men yeah. What's your opinion on that? I think I think it should be the future of Nigeria mm. right now because my goodness, I can't. Yeah, we so have bad. we have too many shy guys. Mm. So we do. Yeah, yes, <laughs> we, have we, have of, we have a lot of. We have a lot of. It's it's like the reverse of the situation right now. Mm. Before we used to have bold guys, so they go, they walk up to the lady. But these days, we actually have shy guys. Mm. So now it's the ladies that actually walk up to them and they're like. Do you want my number? So mm. I mean, oh. well, there's no harm in doing it. <laughs> well, maybe if if not, that I'm already married. Mm. I, I wouldn't have my. Um, 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 I think I'd have 
like mm. to be proposed to. Would that be fun for me? Interesting. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is, it is, maybe you feel good so about like, yourself. You know, well. put the flowers, everything, and you're like, would you marry? I'm like, yes. Like, we need the guys to enjoy it. You guys get I need that feeling too. <laughs> All right, so that's true. So, once again, welcome to the show. Um, Thank you. So, I just reeled it out. You're an MC, you're a DJ, you're a presenter, you're a producer. I think you missed one. Oh, really? sound engineer. Wow, as that's well? a lot. Yeah. Okay. Do you, you act come, as well? You should come down here mm. sometime. You see that acting part. Mm. We're, we're thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> you see where Nigeria is going? Everyone mm. is doing skits, right? Mm. Now. So, skits. I mean, it's just a matter of time before we join them. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, that's in the pipeline as well. Definitely. Well, right. that video I saw looks like something like, I wanted like to say, is that a skit? skit? right? Mm. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, the, that, that's something that in the long run would obviously do stuff around my crafts. Mm. Okay. So, you know, you have weird skits where, you know, someone comes to meet the DJ, Oh my God, I've not gotten food. And I'm like, do I look like the caterer mm. to you? Mm. You know, just fun stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I feel like everyone is actually using skits to communicate. So, mm. in a matter of time, we would soon start acting. What okay. do you think? And people mm -hmm. are making quite a lot of money. From yeah, from skits. Mm -hmm. When you hear the money sometimes, you mm. actually feel like you want to do the same thing too. Mm. But, you know, not everybody's called to this stuff. Absolutely. And if it doesn't work for you, there's no point just jumping into it and. Mm. You probably mess and it up. And because it works for somebody else does not does necessarily mean it's, it's going, going to, to work, going for, to work you. for you. Yeah. So mm. I think it's usually always nice to just do what works for you. But all right. there's no harm in trying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you juggle all these things that you do? The DJing, the presenting, MCing, all producing, everything. All those things. Yeah. How well, do, for me, I you, think Where do you find the time? It's a healthy lifestyle for me. So first of all, I don't do a nine to five job. Okay. So it's like my everyday life. Mm. It's media. It's, it's the life I live daily. So mm -hmm. um, I present at a radio station. Mm -hmm. I also DJ at that same radio station. And mm -hmm. from time to time, I get called to you know, produce jingles. I also own a personal studio. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I own a recording studio. So from time to time, of course, you're a DJ. You have a lot of artists that reach out to you and they're like, um, you know, um, my song doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. Can you recommend a producer for me or something? Okay. And you listening to the person, you feel like, okay, I could actually help this guy out mm -hmm. so yeah production gets in play there mm -hmm. so you could help this artist produce their song and also promote their music mm -hmm. at the same time okay. and then um for the sound engineering parts i i really don't think there's anyone who is into you know the dj business production business that you don't know how to connect cables connect it to this mixer it brings out sound from the speaker connect to the amplifier use processors and stuff like that so mm -hmm. i think for me it's just it's it's intertwined. Okay. It's you know it's linked mm -hmm. one way or the other, and I I guess maybe very soon we'll soon start shooting skits. Mm. Interesting. Well, yeah. so has there ever been a time where you had to juggle maybe being a DJ and being uh, an MC at the same time? Just yeah, I've, so I've had really fun moments. Oh yeah, I I did a gig um, sometime. Uh, I think maybe like three years back, yeah. So the MC that was supposed to show up at the event, mm. it was supposed to be um, a camo. I think that's the right word. Mm. Camo. 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 Yeah, it's like some form of Hausa um, track. Oh, camo. Oh, camo. Oh. Camo. Camo. <laughs> Excuse my friend. That's friends. okay. That's Please. okay. <laughs> so it was supposed to be a camo and. Um, mm. In fact, it wasn't that the MC did not show up. They didn't know they needed an MC. Okay. Oh. So a few minutes later, a friend of the bride walks up to me and is like, please help us out. There's no MC. I'm like, what do you mean there's no MC? Mm. You paid me to DJ. They can't, but I mean, at that point in time, you just had to, you know, save face. And um, thank God for, you know, the skill, the craft. Mm. I was like able to just, you know, um, what do you call it? I was able to step in. Mm -hmm. So what I just did was I moved my DJ set a little bit further. And then from there, I MC'd, I DJ'd at the same time. It was mm. fun. Trust me. Mm. It was really fun. So yeah, it's... It's stuff that you just see on the crafts. Okay. There are even days that you actually get to events and the MC is not even doing what he or she is supposed to do. Mm. Yeah. And at least with that skill, the body of knowledge that you have, you can easily just, you know, um, what do you call it, suggest to him, okay, how about you do this, how about you do that, you know? Mm. A lot of people actually jump into this stuff without even any foreknowledge okay. of it. Mm. Everybody just feels like, ah, my well, MCs are collecting money right mm. now. Let me just so an MC. You just go there and, mm. you know, the person gets there, doesn't even know the first thing to do, doesn't know when to um, introduce himself, introduce guests, how to rec um, recognize dignitaries. Mm. And this guy is probably call, um, calling some honorable by his name. Mm. We have so-so person in the place and they're there, no, 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 don't no, do, do like do that. that. Yeah. So stuff like that. So mm. not everybody is really um, skilled at distance, but over time, mm. when you just walk, you just find yourself, you know, 
mixing them together. Yeah. I think at Newly, I just, I just added being a hype man. Okay. Yeah, so I, have, I don't work? hype at clubs. I just hype at... So I'm more of a DJ that does wedding events. That's mm. like my oh. selling point. Mm. Anyone that knows me knows I, I do a lot of wedding gigs. That's, that's what I do. I just love weddings. Mm. I don't like clubs. I, I've never played at a club. Okay. Mm. Yeah, never played at a club. But, you know, wedding events are like taking a different tone where most of the things you see in the club, most of the things you see at parties, they have people are trying to like bring, bring that them. into the wedding space. So mm. now you have hype men at weddings. Mm. So imagine the bride and the groom, they are dancing and you know, the hype man is giving the hype, calling their name, go, go so, so person, go that person, mm. like that, like that. You know, there's just this vibe gives. Are you, are you thinking of getting married or are you married? I, I, does that look on your face? Okay. <laughs> no, does it look on, oh my God, I need a hype man. I, oh, I, do you, do you like have, get like a different kind of payment to be a hype man or how does that work? Okay, so um, for now, I think I just do it for the fun of it. Why? Because there are some people that actually get paid off mm. from doing that. And oh. since it's not really a strong point for me, it's just stuff that maybe I went to a gig, there wasn't a hype man, the MC. So now you have MCs that, so once upon a time, there used to be like, um, let me just backtrack a little. Mm. There used to be like um, about three generations of MCs in the wedding space. Mm. So you had MCs that you had to be a comedian then mm -hmm. to be an MC in mm -hmm. this town mm -hmm. yeah. and then after then we actually moved from that um, era now we're at the era where we, we got to the era where to be an MC you just need to know how to make people have fun okay. right. you know play wedding games you see a lot of wedding games at Have weddings it. these right. days mm -hmm. and now we now have the next phase of MCs now mm -hmm. so we now have MCs that are um, they, they will pass as a comedian they come for you to have fun play wedding games mm -hmm. and then um, you now have MCs that are still hype men. So it's three in one. Mm. So you have clients that actually pay for these three things at the same time. So you want an MC now that, you know, will pass as a comedian, you know, crack some light jokes. No, no, you know, the country is really tense right mm. now. So not everybody wants um, weird jokes. Mm. So you just need someone that knows where to draw the line between the joke, between the games, and how to, you know, just get you to party. I'm sorry, people are tense. Imagine, imagine spending money right now to get married mm. and you, the groom, in your head, they're like, hey, cook, um, um, crate of, crate of, um, of coke, <laughs> or packs of coke. Mm. They are thinking of like, hey, 500K, I've never balanced uh, triple D, 200,000. And you're dancing into the hall. Yeah. And you're like, hey, Ketra, Ketra told me that the needs mm. might not be enough. You know, but there's just that way the hype man just, he just picks that tension. And, and it's just like, hey, um, Go so so person, go so person, go. And you know, the guy just for a second, mm. he just, you know, lose he just lose that home training, just has a good time. And then maybe when he sits down again, it's like, hey, Check it I'm, back. Going, I'm going Emmanuel money for cocktail. <laughs> but you know, so that's that yeah, yeah it's 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 really fun. Mm. You know, when you just have a hype um, hype man that passes as an MC and he just knows how to, you know, just mm. get you in that comfortable space. Okay. All right, so with a DJ has ever has evolved. Yeah, I remember the back then where we actually used to use real turntables. Oh, with, vinyl. With, with vinyl, vinyl LPs and and all that. You know, you you scratch on them. Like, yeah. But now you have um, computers, you have laptops, you use the controllers, and controllers, and, 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 and all that. Yeah. How has that? How has that improved or diminished the art of DJing? Okay, so um, that question is tricky, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I think I'll just answer it from my own perspective. Exactly, from your own perspective. Um, everybody loves technology. Okay. I mean, no one wants to go back to the days of sending letters to your girlfriend mm. when you can just send an SMS. SMS. Same for DJs. It makes life easy for us. So I happen to be one of those DJs that made use of CDJs. Mm. Um, what CDJs are, if you've ever you know, seen a DJ back then, there's this big bag that we used to carry and you have CDs, CDs inside there. A lot of and you CDs. have this guy's name written there, nice, yeah, okay, well, Davido wasn't there then, mm. sorry. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Davido. But, you know, <laughs> so, um, you know, you had Nice, you had most of all those guys. So mm. then you you burn your CDs and then you label it Nice. And then even on the body of that white CD, you're going to write the hit tracks. Mm. So maybe the hit track is track one, track mm. three, track four. So and them. then, you know, you mm. put the CD there, you play, you try to sync it. It was... That's a lot of work. It was hard work. Mm. It was as in serious hard work. Sometimes it's as embarrassing as you are actually playing music and your CD starts yes. to skip. Mm. 
Oh. And people are like, what's, what's going, going on? on? Mm. And you don't know how to explain to them that this city, mm. he don't scratch. <laughs> 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 you know, so after that day, you probably go and bond up at Class City like two or three more times, you know, so oh, okay. you can, um, what do you call it? Um, you can make use of it. But it was hard work, man. You carry mm. a bag. But right now, I mean, look at how life is, is as fun as you just carry one small laptop, uh -huh. your um, DJ controller, nobody even uses um, big vinyls mm. anymore. If you see anyone using a vinyl, the person is probably going to have a very long set, mm -hmm. maybe like three, four, five, eight hour sets. Mm. You know, there are people that still use vinyl till now professionally, but mm. think about it, you carry that much load to go and play maybe a one hour or two hour event, it's stressful. Mm. However, technology has been able to like, make Compressive. these things compact mm. so you can travel light with your flight case. I mean, mm. with a flight case and a school bag right now, I'm going to Lagos. Mm. In case you want to take me to Lagos, yeah. I know you're thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I can go to Lagos with that, and mm. you know, it just it makes the work easier. Mm. We're gradually even we've gotten to that point in time where right now you can actually control music from your phone. Mm. So your laptop is set up yeah. there, but say maybe as the DJ you needed to use the restroom, mm -hmm. you went to pee, and while you're in the restroom, music mm. has to go. On. Music has to go on, so you can actually control from your mobile phone what is playing on your laptop, okay. mm. and technology is just going, and it's fun. Mm. I mean, I'm waiting to see when we start doing touch screen DJing mm. or oh, wow. probably when <laughs> you have I think that's the next when, step when now. When it gets to that yeah. point yeah, I think that's the it next looks step. like I'm going to try some of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it looks like it, it sounds like a lot of fun because you know these things we we, 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 we talked about them uh, some years back um, I, I believe this, there was this movie that uh, they had uh, the touch screen and they were like moving things up and down and people were like it, it's this never gonna, gonna happen this? it's never gonna happen <laughs> and, and, and that's that's where we are now so, so DJing can actually get to that mm -hmm. whereby you can actually do things um, uh, a, a lot easier with, with, with all the screens. All, and all the screens. But um, let me still go back to the issue of our technology or the evolution of DJing. Um, have you used vinyl before? Yeah, I use vinyl, use vinyl before. Okay, yeah. fine. So the purists will actually say that is actual DJing, that what you guys do or right, or doing right now is just, just coasting now. You just go, you put something on the computer. And you do this and you do that. You know, that's, yeah. not, that's, that, that's not DJing. You're just uh, arranging play playlists. playlists. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But when you use vinyl, you remove, you scratch, you do this. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, just your BPM. You, you, exactly. You scratch, you do this, you do that adjustment, you remove this one, you put that, you know? Okay, uh, you, so that, that it gives you the the real feeling, feeling of being a DJ? Well, you can actually achieve that with a controller I right see. now. You can achieve your scratch. In fact, DJ has left scratch now. We have mm. drummers. Mm -hmm. So I play drums on my console, like, you know, those Konga mm. African drums. Mm. It's, has, it's, it's gone that, um, that, um, that advanced okay. that we actually play drums on the console. Mm -hmm. Some of us even go as far as we bring live drummers. Mm. You, seem you, know, to be so you seem to be having a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, that's, that's, that's the vibe I get. And sorry, I, I love what I do. It's mm. something that if you woke me up 3 a.m. in the night mm. and you're like, can you DJ for us till mm. 6 a.m.? I'm like, I mean, why not? And get paid for it. And get paid, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it was something I was doing for fun <laughs> yeah. before I started getting paid for mm. it. So even when the money came, it was it was a plus. Exactly. It was a plus. Mm. And I mean, it's, it's fun for me. And however, but still back to that question. Mm. So vinyl doesn't actually kick out the idea of making use of controllers. You have controllers right now mm. that the um, the face is actually built like vinyl. It carries vinyl. You have controllers now okay. that have vinyl okay. that on, works with them. with them. So it's, okay. it's actually, um, it has the vinyl feeling. The only difference now is you're not putting records, records on them. here and yeah. there, which I mean, over time we had to leave that. I, mm. I give you um, a weird situation of where your, um, your record is scratched skips, yeah. and it starts to skip and mm. it's really embarrassing. I mean, right now, it's cool that you know you can play this song mm. 200 times. I have a song on my system. Mm. It's, uh, um, technology has gone as far as, if you play a song, the software actually tells you how many times, times you play that song. Mm. So I have a song on my system. I'm so sure I played that song more than a thousand times. Mm. And it didn't skip. So think about mm. a record. Mm. So at the end of the day, you see the DJ is, it's all about the person using the hardware. Okay. Mm. You could have vinyl and you wouldn't even know how to scratch. So mm. maybe all you just do is you just beat match. Mm. And most of us that carry those principles from back then, like right now, um, as, as a DJ, a professional DJ, mm. you shouldn't be seen using a sync button. You know what a sync button is? Mm -hmm. Sync. Okay, so sync. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me bring it. Yeah. You know, let me bring it home for you. So sync button is a Davido song is playing on the left mm. and you want the Whiskey song on the right to oh. play at the same tempo 
and at the same beat time mm. huh. with the other song. So when you actually flip from one song to the other, your audience doesn't know the difference. They oh. just know we stop hearing David's mm -hmm. voice, no, the beat is still good, now we're hearing Whiskey. That's just the idea. Yeah. So a lot of um, amateur DJs, sorry to use that word, but okay. a lot of amateur DJs actually make use of that sync button. I think it's those kind of people you talk about. Mm. For me, I still believe in the old school, you know, you match your BPMs there. I mean, exactly. the, the control is there for a reason. Mm. So what's the point of just, you just press the sync button and you're just playing and people are like, oh my God, this guy is good. You know, from time to time, you know, you want to get that adjustment, that mm -hmm. scratch. Exactly. That feel that life touch mm. you know the person's like this guy knows what he's mm, doing exactly so yeah technology only just makes it sound better mm. it hasn't killed the idea of the dj craft you even have people that after they set up their controller mm. you can still connect vinyl okay so there's actually um, um, um there's actually a space for that kind of connection right okay. now so if you're still the old school kind of dj you still like that feeling of vinyl you can mm. actually connect that to your controller so your controller is in front of you but then you use you vinyl, use to vinyl to scratch, to scratch. Okay. so you still very, get that feeling very interesting mm. you know so it's it's really broad mm. it's really broad mm. and you know it's 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 gone a, a whole lot more than you can think. I mean, once upon a time, we knew DJs to just have just their controllers. Now you, um, now you have DJs that own sound. Mm. They own their speakers. Some mm. of them are into lighting, special effects, mm. and it's just evolving every mm. step of the way. Well, mm. now it looks like we have quite a number of women DJing, you know, in the DJ space yeah. as well. I, I was watching, I think, at some point, the Big mm. Brother one of their parties or so and then it was a lady i was like is that really a woman doing all of mm. that switch um, dj switch uh, that's all right yeah, yeah. Mm. so did you switch so do you think there's a form of um a kind of competition you know between women djs and just men mm, in the men. industry well for me i don't know about others but I welcome a lot of female DJs. Mm -hmm. I even go out there to see how, you know, I could help them improve their craft or one thing or the other. I'm I'm open to the fact of this thing shouldn't only just be restricted to men. In fact, these days you even have some kind of events where they actually just want only a lady or yeah, they actually just want a lady or they, you know, they want to promote, I'm, I'm looking for the right word, you know, there's this stuff about promoting the female gender doing a particular kind of business. So <laughs> these days, I mean, I'm, I'm open to having female DJs. I've, I've mm -hmm. always been open to work. I set up for a lot of female DJs. Like mm -hmm. I just go set up equipment, sound and stuff like that and, mm -hmm. you know, just push them out there. But, you know, there's always going to be that feeling of mm -hmm. this thing has always been a stuff that men have been seen to do. Right. So now having women actually do it all of a sudden. Mm. You have to go extra. Yeah, you have to go extra. And not all of them have been able to pick the pace okay. as it should have been. You know, there's a way you hear a guy playing and you're like, ah, no, mm. there's a male DJ. And there's a way you hear a female playing and you just give her that look of, She's a female. Mm. She's trying. Okay. She's trying. That, that, that just hurt my heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on, come on. It no, can't no. be that bad. You know, <laughs> too bad I couldn't even mm. come here with my setup. Maybe I would have mm. put her on the spot, you know. Yeah, it's let's a, give her some scratch. Yeah. 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 How how did, how all this came about? I mean, like we some of us grew up and with um, DJs like um, Jimmy Chat, who were who's like, still playing till now. Yeah, who's yeah. still playing till now? I mean, yeah. like they've been doing it for for a very long time, yeah. and um, and I know they've inspired a lot of people. How inspirational have have those people from those generation been on how, how to you? How, how how inspirational have they been, and how what what kind of influence do they have on yeah. you now? So I would say it's because of the sacrifices. Mm. It's because of what most of these guys had to go through. It's because of um, what these guys had to fight for. That's why DJing is a thing right now. I mean, once upon a time, you couldn't tell someone, like it wasn't something you wanted to admit to, mm -hmm. except if you've like seen yourself as a total castaway. Like mm. right. there's just, nah, this guy is, is bad influence. Mm -hmm. You know, but the likes of their Jimmy Jats, um, the likes of um, their DJ Humility, mm. um, DJ Cool, so most of all these um, OGs, they've, they've been able to help us put the craft in the corporate space. Mm. So uh, the, you can actually go out there and tell someone, you know what? I'm a DJ. I'm a DJ. Mm. Like, I don't hide it from you anyone. actually own the fact yeah, that you're a I, DJ. Yeah, I, I think maybe uh, when, when, when it was a hit for me, 
um, I was able to tell my in-laws when I was about to get married, I'm when they're DJ. like, what you do? I'm, I'm, a, I'm DJ. a DJ. This, mm. is what, uh, this is what I do. As in, I play music. You should check out some of my videos. Or you should even come to some of my games. <laughs> and, exactly. you know, it, it's, it's gotten to that point in time that we're actually welcomed with open arms mm. because you can't do anything without a DJ right now. Mm. You give back to a child, Let's you party. need a DJ. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're getting married, mm. you need a DJ. You're celebrating your birthday. In fact, even burial. Mm. They call mm. DJs, yes. well, please, oh, wow. don't call me for burial. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just, I mean, don't call me for burial, please. That's, that's going to be weird. Mm. You know, so, I mean, people like that have actually given DJs mm. a say. So shout out to the OGs. Yeah, so shout out to the OGs, man. Big mm. shout out. I, I probably would have tried to post it, but I don't know if the camera is going to pick that. You know. But big shout out to every OG out there, you mm. know. They've been pushing the craft is is as um, as cool as these guys actually even created an association. Mm. Mm. I don't know if you ever heard about it. Am I might mm. free mm. Never to speak about it. Mm. So do you know we actually have a DJ association of Nigeria. Okay. Wow. We have a DJ association of Nigeria. We have different chapters, FCT chapter, Lagos, Portacot, any state you can think of that they are DJs. Mm. They have a DJ association. Mm -hmm. And what this what this has helped us to do is due to that association now, if you are going to another state for a gig, you actually don't have to um, carry your equipment. Equipment, okay. Because there's an association already waiting there. So all you have to do is drop a, um, drop a message or drop a call on one of the WhatsApp group chats. Mm. Hi guys, man, I'm coming to Kaduna for a wedding gig. I need um, a pair of full range speakers, a pair of subwoofers. I need um, a vinyl turntable. I need this, I need that, I need that. And you just mm. travel with your laptop that has that your like music teamwork. library. Mm. So, I mean, it's what these guys have actually done. Mm. That's why we have that there. Mm. And you have the likes of um, um, some of the names I mentioned, um, um, what do you call it? Um, DJ Cool, DJ Jimmy Jazz. You have these guys actually spearheading mm. this association. Mm. It's as, um, they're literally fighting for DJs to have a say. Okay. And they are, you know, helping to protect DJs out there. Mm. Also, what most of them have done have actually enlightened DJs. Once upon a time, you just call a DJ, hey, are you free to play at so-so and so-so place? We don't ask questions. We you just carry equipment and, and we just go there. But you know, the knowledge that most of these guys have given us is as you can't call me for a gig right now. Mm. I have to ask you a lot of questions. Where's the venue? What's your guest size? What's this event all about? Mm. Mm. We're done talking, we're done negotiating. I'm like, okay, so before you pay your money, I need to send you an invoice that mm. has my terms there. Oh, well, that sounds corporate. So mm. you, need to, um, you need to put this in place. I need um, um, a good working environment. You can't expect to put me under the rain and expect me to set up. Mm. It's going to affect my equipment. You can't expect to put me under the sun and expect me to set up. It's going to affect my... So, you know, these guys have actually been able to share this knowledge, what they've gone through. And mm. it's what they've gone through that we've been able to use to, you know, grow the crafts. Mm. So, you can imagine right now when... You can imagine the look that must have been on my parents' face when mm. I finished. So, I went to um, Afebalola University. Mm. I studied um, computer science. So I finished from school, for mm -hmm. the record. Mm. I finished from school um, with a very strong 2-1. Okay. But in this whole situation, it was just, they don't have DJ schools, mm. like they don't have universities for DJs right no. now. No. Um, we, don't, we don't even have a university for sound engineers in Nigeria. Okay. As close as it comes to home is South Africa. Mm. Mm. That's where you can do anything, sound engineering, corporate DJing and stuff like that. So now later I'm hoping we would have stuff mm. like that. If we had that, I mean, I would have gone for that. So I just did the computer that, okay, yeah, I would work with computers, work with a lot of machinery yeah, and stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, so, that's, it's been a very interesting conversation. And yeah. it's been absolutely fantastic having you on the show. It's been and an eye opener. have him come play. Something uh, uh, exactly. For us. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Next time you will come with your equipment and yeah. you'll actually do a little something for us. Mm. Um, definitely. And of course, definitely. she will take a spin on the, on the table. <laughs> well. In fact, she's going to start. Actually, she's going to start. And then, of course, we'll also put you on the spot. You know, it's always just fun mm. to just put, um, you know, you just see people in a different light. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like you've not seen them before. Exactly. So like imagine how on the turntable or you mm. so like she's playing and then you're the hype man. All right. Oh <laughs> I look forward to that. So All DJ right. Holoski, it's very nice having you on the show. It's been Thank absolutely you. fantastic. And um, we look forward to having you here again. Definitely. I would love to come back. All right. Like I felt like if they left me here, we'd probably talk to it so <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it's a conversation to end. So uh, exactly. 
keep going. All right, so thank, thank you. you. All right, thank show. you very much for coming on the show. Yeah. All right, well, it's still Daybreak Extra on uh, Trust TV, and I think um, we're about to wrap it up now. Mm -hmm. So sad, we yeah. have to go. Yeah. Uh, so this is where we're going to wrap up the show. Um, it's been absolutely amazing. It's been a blast. We've talked about customer service. We've talked about DJing. And Party. we've had a party. <laughs> and we've had, we have, we had so much fun uh, in the studio. I mean, like, we, 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 we hope that you had fun uh, watching us as well. So let's do it all again. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. And I'm Zainab Bella. <laughs>